Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in chapter 2, Thermochemistry. But now we're going to focus on 2.3 Hess Law, part 1 first. So in this video, we're going to look into the definition of Hess Law. And we're going to apply Hess Law to calculate the enthalpy changes using the algebraic method as well as using the energy cycle method. Alright, so without any further ado, let us start. So Hess Law stated that when a reactant are converted to product, the total enthalpy change is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. Okay, so the enthalpy change from A to C, which is den denoted as delta H1, is the same as the enthalpy change going to A, going to B, and going to C. So, as long as the initial uh, point is the same, and it reaches the final destination, the enthalpy change going to uh, be the same. Doesn't matter which pathway they are taken. So, um, you can imagine it to be two hikers here. So, the pathway that is taken by uh, hiker 1 might be different than hiker 2. But at the end of the day, the potential energy of hiker 1 and hiker 2 are the same even though they took the different path. So, the enthalpy change between 1 and different pathway is still the same. Alright? And the application of Hess law can be used to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction that are too difficult to carry out directly in a calorimeter. So, in calorimeter, uh, you have learned this in the subtopic of 2.2, where uh, there are two types, which is simple calorimeter and bomb calorimeter. However, not all reaction can be carried out in calorimeter. And that is where Hess law is going to be very beneficial because it can be used to calculate the enthalpy change. And it can do them into the, in two ways, which is using algebraic method and, use, and second one using the energy cycle method. All right? And algebraic method is all about cancel out and rearrangement. Okay. So we're going to look into each one of these in the latter slide. So we're going to focus on using the algebraic method first. So given the following reaction and their enthalpy changes to be something like this, where ethene, which is C2H2, reacting with oxygen will form two, two moles of carbon dioxide and water. And the heat enthalpy is going to be negative 1299.6 kJ. Meanwhile, carbon uh, reacting with oxygen will produce one mole of carbon dioxide. And the enthalpy change is negative 393.5 kJ. And for the third equation, is hydrogen uh, reacting with oxygen, uh, forming one mole of hydrogen gas. Delta H is negative 285.9 kJ. However, we need to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction, where carbon reacting with hydrogen gas, forming C2H2. So, delta H here is how much? So, this is given, and we need to find this. So, how are we going to calculate that? So, first, by using algebraic method, we need to write down the thermochemical equation of which the enthalpy is unknown. So, we know that this is the thing that we need to find out, where two carbon reacting with hydrogen forming C2H2. In the second step, we need to write down the given equation in the correct position with the enthalpy value. So, this is given in the question. Alright? But now, you look into the position first. Alright? We need to ensure that it is in the correct position. So, what is meant by this is, uh, product need to be in the product side and reactant need to be in the reactant side of the target equation. So, C2H2, C2H2. So, given is in reactant, but our target needs to be in the product. So, we have to inverse the equation. Here, going to there, and here, going to there. So, we turn the equation around, or we inverse the equation, and our negative sign just now changed to a plus sign. Okay? So, it is already in the correct position. Now, we look into carbon. Carbon in the reactant side. Carbon here in the reactant side, so it is okay. Hydrogen gas in the left hand side, hydrogen gas in the left hand side, okay, which is also okay. Now 
we need to multiply the equation and the enthalpy values accordingly and then simplify the equation. So here, you can see that C2H2 here, one mole, carbon in the target equation is 2, but we only have 1 here. So we need to do something with the equation. Meanwhile, hydrogen here is still hydrogen, 1 mole of hydrogen here, so which is okay. So now, we need to multiply this equation by 2. So all the equation left hand side and right hand side will be multiplied by 2, and the enthalpy will also be multiplied by 2. Alright? Now, we're going to simplify the equation where carbon dioxide left hand side can be used to cancel out the right hand side. Water and water can be cancelled out, and oxygen here can cancel out both of the oxygen here. Okay? So 2 plus 1 over 2 of oxygen will get 5 over 2 oxygen as well. So here and here, here can be cancelled out. So what's left is 2 carbon plus hydrogen and our product is C2H2. Now for step 4, we have to total up the enthalpy values for delta, uh, delta heat of the formation. Uh, we can delta H1 plus delta H2 and plus delta H3. So plus 1299.6 plus 2 times negative 393.5 and plus negative 285.9. So, the last answer that we will get is plus 226.7 kilojoule per mole. Alright, and we have to add up mole per mole here because, because it refers to the formation of 1 mole of C2H2. Alright, so don't forget to add up per mole at the end of the equation here, uh, of the answer here. Alright, okay, that's one is for the algebra method. Now we're going to use that for, we're going to use the same example, but now using the energy cycle method. Okay, the same step. For step number one, we write down the thermochemical equation of which the enthalpy is unknown. So we need to find this one. And number two, we need to construct the energy cycle. So we need to multiply the equation and enthalpy values with a certain factor if there is any. Okay, so this is given in the question. Okay, uh, this is our target equation. We need to find this one. So here, you can see that um, you can start with this one first. So carbon can be used to form carbon dioxide. So you focus on this equation first. Carbon can be used to form carbon dioxide. And the another reactant that we need to include is oxygen. So we include on the left hand side. But now the mole is multiplied by 2. Okay, and here also multiplied by 2. So 2 carbon, 2 mole of oxygen gas, and 2 mole of carbon dioxide. And then uh, and the enthalpy also multiplied by 2. And hydrogen here can be used to form water. Hydrogen here can be used to form water. And the other reactant is oxygen gas. Must include oxygen gas. And But we don't make any changes on the enthalpy. So we can just put delta H3 here. Okay. And now, as what you can see here, the bottom layer, which is 2 carbon dioxide plus H2O, is the same as C2H2 plus 5 half of oxygen gas. So here we can make another arrow to C2H2 and the other byproduct that is formed is plus 5 over 2 oxygen gas. And the enthalpy given here is delta H1. Okay, so we have constructed uh, this energy cycle method. Now we're going to total up the enthalpy values. So delta HF is equal to delta H2 times 2 plus delta H3 plus delta H1. Okay, everything in the same direction and going up into a, forming a product. You can imagine it's A to C is equal to A going to B and B going to C. Okay, which is Hess law. Alright, so you just add up the value here which is delta H1 is equal to 1299.6 kilojoule plus 2, negative 393.5 plus delta H3, which is given in the equation, negative 285.9. So the total that you have, 
plus 2 to 6.7 kilojoule per mole. Alright, and don't forget the per mole here because it refers to 1 mole of C2H2. Alright, I think that's all for this video. So, uh, I know it might be a little bit too new to you, but once you do it again and do a little bit more example, uh, I'm sure you can do that. Alright, so today we have looked into Hester's Law and we also look into two examples, which is algebraic method and energy cycle method. Okay, I think that's all for today. See you again some other time. Bye!